As we are all aware, our modern society has been transformed by the arrival of the digital era. This online conference serves as a live evidence for the same. The healthcare industry is also no exception for such transformations. In fact, the roots of digitalization are getting penetrated deeper into our healthcare system by ways of EHR, telemedicine, big data anal analysis, etc. Adoption of various digital technologies contributes significantly to cater to the rising demand and cost of care, provide quality care, and improve patient outcomes. The topic for this session is transforming healthcare in the digital era, and Dr. Uma Nambiar Madam is here with us today to shed light on the various aspects of this topic. A few words about Dr. Nambiar. Dr. Uma Nambiar is the chairperson, DH India Association, and executive director, Gym Care Hospital, Kanur, Kerala. Dr. Nambiar holds an MBBS degree in medicine. MCH Neurosurgery from Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute of Medical Sciences and Technology and has completed her MBA in Healthcare Administration, specialities in strategic consulting, healthcare policies, commissioning new hospitals, process re-engineering in existing hospitals, process standardization and quality in healthcare, healthcare IT. She is a teacher in healthcare administration and clinical and biomedical engineering with over 30 years of experience in this industry. Madam is currently the Vice President, Telemedicine Society of India, Kerala Chapter, and is a former advisory to Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health, Djibouti, Africa. I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Nambia. The stage is all yours, ma'am. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, let me thank the organizers, uh, Professor Majumdar, Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Vidya, Dr. Abhay, and the entire Symbiosis team for giving me this opportunity to be with you all for SimHealth 2021. I have had multiple interactions in the past with the team at Symbiosis for and multiple occasions, and it has always been a pleasure. And I'm very excited to be here in this forum. So today, uh, as uh, we have already been informed that we will be talking about uh, the transformation that is happening in healthcare in this digital era. So if you really uh, see, I think digital transformation is after the industrial revolution, the next big thing, uh, is the next big thing that has happened after the industrial revolution. And to me, I think it is not wrong to say that we can call it a revolution of information management. This is deciding the way the future is going and how um, our future is going to pan out. And as Dr. Harsh just said recently, just a while ago, that the world is shrinking. I mean, if COVID has shown us that the world is really shrunk to a small space, I think it's a lot to do because of the digital interventions that have made the world a very, very very small place and therefore it is apt that we should be talking about the digital transformation that is happening so i will be uh, touching on at least briefly what is happening in the healthcare uh, sector so before we really uh, go into this we must understand the entire healthcare ecosystem it's important because Unlike in the past, healthcare is no longer just a matter between a patient and a doctor. We are going away from just treating or restricting ourselves to only one patient at a time. In fact, what we are going to see more and more is that we are going to be doing interventions across the ecosystem which will inform involve you see the patient, the clinicians, you will see the caregivers at home, you will see the caregivers in the community and all of them. And therefore it's important to understand that this is a very, very complex ecosystem and therefore the complexity of care also increases. And when this complexity increases, it is virtually impossible for an individual to do this on a manual or a mental basis alone. We need technology to help us to transcend this entire system to be able to make the right decision. 
And if I was to just to categorize these elements of the health ecosystem, it would be preventive health, which is largely based on community for, uh, and individual patients, prescriptive health, which is uh, management of an acute episode in a healthcare delivery setup, and population health, which is the management of cohorts, which are local, could be regional, could be national, or could be global. And this is uh, the entire you know, future scenario of healthcare intervention. And uh, just to brief you about how the population health management has been done. I mean, we have been thinking that this is, this needs to be done, but I don't think that anywhere before the, um, you know, digital technology, we did not have the bandwidth to manage such large population data to eradicate the, or in fact, or at least to address the burden of the non-communicable diseases or the, or the burden of the pandemic as it happened to improve the quality of care. And in general, to also facilitate research and to understand what is happening across the world in healthcare. So this was always felt, the need was always felt that we have to do this, but we always did in small segments, you know, small sectors of populations just as much as a physical or a manual system could handle. But now that we have digital technology available to us, we can do it at a very, very fast pace and we can do it with great accuracy. In future, the patient is not going to just be talking about one episode of hospitalization alone in terms of illness. In fact, if you, if the patient's record is going to be a personal health record. And that is the way even the Indian government wants the Indian citizens to have a PHR in future. And that's one of the focuses in the National Digital Health Mission is a PHR, which is nothing but, uh, I could call it a cradle to the document of an individual, which lists right every single episode which can have a relationship to health or any ancillary item, which is in the personal health record. So it would have details of the drugs that a person takes, the, the number of hospital visits that a person has done, the immunizations, the clinics that they visit, all the diagnostics that they would have taken. Other patients who are you know, of the same disease, let's say if I'm a diabetic, then I would be linked to other diabetics and we could share experiences, share education material the insurance providers, you know, or the other payers in case if it's my office or any other payers that we have, the research, you know, we have accessibility to research which is related to the same disease and the care team, which could be family, could be doctors, the social health worker, the nurses and the employers. So all of this uh, would form part of a patient's health record. And this can only be stored and can be integrated with the use of digital technology. Now, parts of these are already in place in some, some places. Some patients probably a lot more than the others, but this is the way that we see future panning out. Now, what are we talking about? You know, when we say, what is the effect of digital technology or the digital transformation? What are we trying to do in healthcare? We are in the business of managing the expectations related to healthcare. Now, what is the expectations that we have? So conventionally, our expectation has always been provision of quality healthcare at a less cost and almost all to have access to the required health. The, that basic expectation has not changed. We just need to find that what are we then trying to do with the use of digital technology? One is we are trying to improve this further. And because we have uh, access to data, we can get data at a much more speed. We have accurate information, far larger analyzable data, which can be automated. And therefore to give us the required knowledge that goes towards improving quality, reducing cost, and to increase the access to healthcare. This is what we are trying to do. So it, the tools that we are using to better this, 
and management of expectation are the digital tools. So in a sense, you can look at how the healthcare delivery to a single patient it has to be patient centric. You can see all the data that goes towards for patients for making the care clinician led, for providing the right evidence for evidence-based medicine, ensuring that we can follow the best practices, integrate the applications of healthcare or the patient's care related to purchase, to billing and accounts and uh, compensation from the insurance and to transform the care by increasing the quality. And this in entirety can be done easily through use of digital technology. So having seen the complexity of the ecosystem, so what we need to do, a little while ago, you uh, heard Dr. Mahajan say about integrated diagnostics. I would go a step further and I'd say integrated healthcare delivery system, which will touch all spaces in the healthcare ecosystem and would involve every stakeholder, which we just showed in the previous slide, almost every stakeholder needs to be integrated in, into this. It is only then that we can realize the expectation, as I said, about good quality healthcare, which means that at hospital, you know, we have conventionally been managing data. Medicine is nothing but data management. We, we look at the patient, we examine the patient, we do a set of diagnostics, we take all that data, collate it in our mind, analyze it based on whatever we read before, what we see in front of us, whatever evidence we've gathered, and our experience, and then we take a decision up and diagnose and prescribe the management. Now, it is all right to do it for one patient at a time, but if you need to really collate it with the learning and knowledge of the centuries that is available with us, it is practically impossible for any physician or any caregiver to manage this as a single person. And therefore, it is necessary to take help from electronic data formats. So we have HISs, which are mostly the administrative part of uh, data capturing, the electronic medical record of the EMR, which deals with the clinical data. We have digital ICUs, which actually are interfaced IC solutions, which interface with all the equipments and uh, give you the, you know, the plethora of data that is there, the lab information, so the radiology information system, PACS, the HR information system, pharmacy systems, all of them are the, they capture data that we have been conventionally captured. We can also integrate with self-care devices, internet of medical things, data related to ambulance data, the patient data from the ambulance, but the ambulance is in transit, so that you can give care in the ambulance as if the patient was already admitted in your ICU, home care, and further advances by using of AI in personalized and predictive medicine, uh, quantum computing, blockchain for uh, data storage and transfer. So this is how the digital technology will help us to process this data much better, much faster, and much more accurately. You can look at how interoperability is so essential. Now, this is important to understand because interoperability is something which is key to ensuring that we get all the data in one place. Now, in so let's not even talk about hospital community and all the other stakeholders. And if I was to just look at what happens within the hospital, if I look at in every um, care setting, whether the patient is in the ward, whether the patient is in the ER, the ICU, or the operation theater, look or the diagnostics, look at all the equipments that are providing data into the EMR. We must make sure that they all can speak to each other. And there is a common language which will, which will help them to communicate all their data into the single record, which is our final EMR 
or a PHR. Now, this is done through interoperability. This is a big challenge. And this is where it is essential when we are also buying our systems. If you are in charge of the hospitals or if you are, if you are in the hospital operations, when you are buying various equipments, you need to make sure that they are capable of sharing their data with your main system. And in future, what will happen is patients will come with a PHR, which is loaded on their phone, and they'll say, okay, you need to transfer this data into my PHR. So you see the interoperability will become all that more important. And this is what gives rise to a longitudinal EMR, like what I said, the single cradle to grave document of an individual, which will focus on data during when they are at home, which is wellness related data, the number of steps you walk, the height, weight, you know, sleep patterns and all of that stuff from various apps that you wear in your watches and various other wearable devices. And when a person is at home to the ward, ICU, OR, and again, post-discharge care at home. All this is inter integrated and all of the data comes to one single device, which is most likely going to be the patient's phone, but otherwise the EMR. So as we just said that the data generation in hospitals and or in a patient's um, care setting or a lifetime can happen clinical data or a non-clinical data. So in a hospital, non-clinical data would be admin, finance, and uh, HR. And there is also data to be shared with the external ecosystem, which is either import of data, which could be, let us say, in a patient's PHR already, there is data and you need to import it while the patient is getting admitted. Or there could be some legal or audit requirements or uh, department of health uh, the government requirements where we have to port some data into the government portals. So all this is going to be very, very important and it has to be addressed. And this is the data that thereafter will be used to analyze and support our decisions, whether it be clinical decisions. And these are just some dashboards that will you know, come out of analyzing all this data to help you make better clinical decisions or to make better business decisions. Now, having said that this is required, we need to look at what is the challenge that we face. The commonest challenge for digitization or you know, for it to succeed in many organizations is a disengaged healthcare worker. They don't see the point. And why they don't see the point is because they do not have the understanding of what is meant by digital health. What does it do for them? They do not have that knowledge. And this is going to change when young students, like most of the students here, are going to be part of the operational team and part of the, part of the healthcare workforce. Because then, you know, this knowledge is already ingrained. But for the existing healthcare workers, and this is what I call the generational divide, for people of our generation or senior, this is you know something which very few people understand. Whereas uh, today's student generations or young faculty, they understand this very well. Then we also find that the healthcare worker and the healthcare IT workforce, they do not, they are not integrated. And most of the times we also find that the digital products, which are the softwares, are usually very inflexible, as in it has been designed by the healthcare IT company and they give you something and they say, okay, now you need to fit this to your process, which is actually not the right thing. It's almost like saying, okay, IT for healthcare rather than, you know, it, it is healthcare for IT, they expect, whereas it should be the reverse. It should be the IT designed for healthcare. And that is not what we normally see. And many of the available softwares are not very user-friendly because of that extremely time consuming for learning. And uh, I do not know how many who are present here uh, have faced this before, but I have seen this at almost all the IT vendors. They try to build the software solution at the cost of the uh, organization or, or the client or the, or the hospital. You know, once you buy the product, they start building it for you. 
instead of having a ready-made off-the-shelf kind of a product, which you can use and customize a little, instead of that, they will literally, the organization has to bear the cost of entire development and it's time consuming, it's costly, and there is a lot of hit and trial and there is a lot of experimentation. So in a way, it is uh, it poses a lot of challenge to the organization and people usually give up after a while. Of course, there is also a fear of losing control by the existing healthcare workers. Uh, they feel that uh, because you don't see how that data is being processed, there is that feeling of not having the control on that data process. Now, this is, to my mind, it's more a perception. And part of that perception has been reduced now. I mean, if I have to say that if there is one thing that has come out of, come good out of COVID, it is um, the fear of uh, it, the you know loss of fear related to digital technology and its use in healthcare by the healthcare worker, the patient as well. But the confidence now that the healthcare workers have is also thanks to COVID. Now, having said uh, about what are the challenges that we have conventionally that we have talked of in trying to adopt digital technology. There are some new challenges which the digital adoption will create for you. One is, as I had mentioned before, the multi-party ecosystem of the data, HR data somewhere, finance data, all different softwares, different uh, machines, uh, data from each of those sources, different platforms, different softwares. How do you integrate that? So that's a that's huge amount of data from multiple sources. And that causes, you know, that's where the problem of interoperability comes. There is no universal user interface. And a big challenge, at least at this moment, that people face is of the legacy systems that many of us already have in our uh, organizations, where we have spent a lot of money, bought some systems, and which uh, you have to migrate uh, that data. If you're going to buy something new, you need to figure out how that will happen and the cost of this change from a legacy system legacy system to another new system these are some of the challenges that we have another big problem is the terminology coding whether you use um, icd whether you want to use snowbed or lawing there is no uniformity and there are no guidelines or regulations and this therefore causes different systems using different codes, coding systems. Some of them will come with it, some of them you have to buy, then you need to you know, integrate and all of that. Um, inbuilt asset tracking, interfacing with multiple devices. I mean, patients these days, or in fact, forget patients, citizens today are using multiple devices for, their, for monitoring their health various IoT devices are, are there, the variable devices are there. So they all need to, uh, we need to be able to port data to and fro. Then in a hospital, you have multiple codes, we need to integrate with all of them, the BA systems and you know all of that, plus linkages to insurance. Uh, so in India, the, all the insurance providers do not as yet accept online um, data or clearances. But I think some of them have started doing and and but going forward, this is what it will be like in places like Dubai, it is always e claims processing, but in India, it is still to come, but uh, that's the way to go. And that is going to happen. Then, as I had mentioned earlier, the rigid process flows that the software forces you to follow and that frustrates the healthcare provider, the doctors and the nurses, they they are made to uh, follow processes which is not part of the clinical process flow, but it is designed in the by the IT uh, developers. Uh, the devices which we use are usually very fragile, and uh, in cases of imported uh, devices, we are not sure of the quality assurances. We also do not know in many of these about the uh, the data security in these devices. Because we have no idea where the device is made, where it is, the data is getting stored, where it is getting analyzed. And usually the seller of the device also does not have any idea. And when you ask them anything, they have no clue. 
Another major flaw that I see and which, you know, is, is, is a problem is very little involvement of the healthcare worker in the design and development. So most of the software that we use has been designed by the software developers with minimal input from the healthcare workforce. It is necessary that uh, this uh, is in fact reduced by a lot of interaction between the engineers and the doctors. And the more interaction they have and the earlier they start this interaction in life, the better it is for the products that we will develop in future. And uh, I have already mentioned uh, to you about, you know, the, uh, the risk of uh, the physicians losing their control. One um, fear that almost always people used to have is that if you use a lot of technology, then there is a risk of dehumanization of care. You know, there is that physician's touch feel uh, about the entire medical field. And this, this used to be given us this big reason for the doctors not to adopt and also reluctance by the patients. But last one year, if we have seen, we realized that this is something which is just a myth. Now we have more and more devices also that will help you auscultate remotely, palpate remotely, feel remotely the texture of the skin and all of that stuff. And it is therefore technology is aiding you or all of us to go from one location to as remote as possible with very minimal loss of that touch and feel, which means that we are almost as good uh, as if the patient was in your own clinic or hospital. The other challenge is the unreliable online sources, misinterpreted information, data security breach. And of course, a lot of uh, uh, people, they put junk, medical junk online, which a lot of people, I mean, I, there, you will feel uh, there are a lot of patients who come, who read blogs and think that that is medical literature. Now, mostly my experience with a lot of this online medical quackeries, my, you know, frustrated patients, frustrated physicians who write some, uh, you know, uh, material which has no reference. And that a lot of people read and come. Now, that's no source of information. That should be, that, that leads to a lot of misinterpretation. So all these challenges, if we need to minimize, we need a very active engagement of the healthcare community and the healthcare technology community. The two have to work hand in hand for this to move forward. This new landscape is eventually changing the way that our existing landscape is. You have new care delivery models. We have new job categories. We have better idea about how to do or how to spare time for ourselves. We can make time for ourselves because we, and therefore less physician or a nurse or any other technician burnout. Major opportunities in data science. And this also creates the new field for value-based payment models, which uh, some countries already experiment with. The consumer, because they get more transparent and ethical care, because there is better participation of this in decision making, they have also more focus on well being. And uh, through connected care, and they are also, we can provide personalized medicine. With respect to training of healthcare workforce, we use digital technologies as a training tool, you know, various simulators and all that. And we know that now. We can't possibly be dissecting human bodies, but it is possible to do uh, simulation. Uh, now, even in forensic science, uh, even in India now, there are two centers where work is going on uh, on digital autopsies. We have in uh, Bangalore as well as uh, in uh, Delhi. Similarly, uh, there is a lot of 
uh, training required to create the workforce that will work in the digital departments of the hospital. So that's the IT department will no longer be just a small one room uh, in the basement where the engineer is fiddling with some of the peripherals like laptops and PCs, but this is a major backbone of the hospital. We uh, heard Dr. Mahajan talk about technology being very expensive. Yes, it is. But what we do know is that with use of AI, with better uh, processing of data and better information, we are reducing the co overall cost of care. We are reducing the cost of providing customized care. I must warn here that you know, we have to make sure that our costs on the IT systems that we deploy are minimized. And that is where I wanted to introduce the term called lean digital. Just like how we talk about lean management, we need to learn lean digital because otherwise we will see skyrocketing costs, which will be a deterrent for us to put digital technologies in our hospitals because hospitals otherwise care is very, very, very expensive to patients. And because a lot of patients do pay out of pocket and the costs have eventually to be spread across all the patients. Therefore, it is necessary for the people who are working in hospitals or in the healthcare systems and designing the healthcare systems to understand how to minimize costs and to optimize the digital technologies that they use. We have to learn to reorient and to see how instead of people who wanted to always control data. From that, we have to become a population that shares data, the healthcare community. We have all seen, you know, in uh, our medical record departments, how we would store a patient's data. We would not share it with patient. We would not give the file to the patient. We have to get out of that. The owner of the data is the patient. The owner, the, it has to be shared with the entire caregiving community and with the government and all the forces that there, there are that requires this data. So we have to make sure that this data is shareable. So we need to get out of this control freak mentality that we have. We need to start focusing on patient as a whole. We need to start focusing on wellness and disease to be seen as these intermittent episodes, which all need to be stitched together in the wellness story of the patient's life from birth to death. So, so it has to be one single, um, you know, continuity of care document or that the entire patient needs to be seen as that care continuum and irrespective of where the patient is and who is treating and wherever the patient goes, the treatment must not get interrupted and all the data that is relevant should always be available to every new team that gets in. And uh, as I mentioned a little while ago, it is no longer about one size fits all. It is about getting all the data that is possible and to see how we customize and personalize uh, thus causing patients. So we have multiple data which we today have unparalleled information that we manage after analyzing. So we become from earlier on doctor centric hospitals. Now we become patient-centric care providers. Irrespective of now, we can provide care. Instead of doctors, now it is doctors guided. We have shared data access, collaborative decision making, and the doctor is a team member. So today's patient is an, I call an e-patient, who's an engaged, empowered, and equal patient. And he has because of the technology, we have the patient has a PHR in their control. And uh, so patient controls the PHR and he controls access to his medical record to the doctor or the caregiver. The digital age doctor is also able to collaborate with the AI. If I was to summarize what is the current digital landscape, so you have isolated examples of very good use of HIS, LIS, PACs, EMRs, preloaded expense cards for uh, universal health insurance, telemedicine and telehealth, which has grown in leaps and bounds last year, 
You have drones that supply blood, vaccine, medicines, and all of that, e-pharmacies. You have use of AI and blockchain, mobile bunny. And you have the new gen consumer, which is the new gen patient and the healthcare worker. What is the roadmap for India? The government has rolled out the National Digital Health Mission on the last uh, independence. Our Prime Minister uh, Modi had rolled out uh, NDHM. And the aim of NDHM is to actually have electronic medical record for every citizen of India. Uh, eventually, every one of us to have a PHR. So in digital age, healthcare is a global public good. So we can no longer talk about a national health policy or a national data security policy. We need to look at it in the global context. We need to make sure that cross-border data exchange, how does that happen? How do we facilitate data access with speed, accuracy, and minimal effort? Because we are all travelers. We all travel so much, and especially Indians, you know, Dr. Mahajan also alluded to the fact that we travel so much. And we all want healthcare anytime, anywhere, which means that wherever we are traveling, whichever place we are, whether we are at office or at home, we need healthcare there. And for that, our governments need to make guidelines and instead of controlling type of guidelines, they need to be more in the governance type of framework. I want to uh, you know, speak a little about data privacy and data confidentiality. Now, we all have been following uh, the data privacy and confidentiality rules and guidelines which have uh, been proposed by the Western countries. I think it is essential to understand the context. We have all, when we see in Indian context, when we look at patients, a lot of patients want their data to be shared with family members and some do not want it. So we have different types of patients. And if we make a rule saying no data can be shared with anybody, it might not help the Indian patients. So we need to really look at the context and governments must make the privacy and the data security related uh, guidelines to match our social uh, and the traditional requirements as well. Data security is very, very important because, you know, any country's citizens' data is a potential bioweapon. And therefore, it is essential that we have very strict uh, uh, rules for cybersecurity. It requires to see the way forward. I think we have to use this generational divide, which I just mentioned a while ago, to re reduce the digital divide that we have in the country. And the big question that we started with is that, is this digital disruption that is happening around us in all other sectors, is the same disruption is going to transform the healthcare? And to my mind, I do not have any doubt that we are on the right highway. And this is the digital highway that will manage the expectations, which we started out with. These are the expectations and we are, this is the highway on which we have to travel to be able to manage the expectations of the patients. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for highlighting the care delivery module in a digital hospital. We hope that this new generation brings with it a positive digital growth in the future to come. Due to paucity of time, we won't be taking any questions with you. But thank yes. you once again, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.